As the temperatures soar, so do energy bills. That demand for energy means cities will rely more and more on wind energy and wind farms. Wind energy in the United States is growing rapidly. We have a lot of turbines built in onshore places. Take a drive through northern or eastern Colorado, you'll see those massive turbines spinning away. But as the need for renewable energy grows, the push to put those turbines offshore does too. The question, just how much energy can those offshore wind farms produce? We need to understand how much electricity we'll actually be able to generate from these turbines as they're happily spinning along in those beautiful, fast ocean winds. That's where Julie Ludquist comes in. Ludquist is a professor in the Department of Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences at CU Boulder and an expert in wind energy. So what we wanted to do was to do simulations over the course of a full year to understand how much energy those turbines are going to be taking from the atmosphere and from each other. In other words, are they even worth building? The answer? A resounding yes. The good news is that we figured out that even though we'll have a lot of turbines operating in close proximity to each other, we'll still be able to generate 60% of the Northeast electrical needs. That's right, 60% of the Northeast power needs. Add in all the other forms of renewable energy like solar and hydro, and you got yourself a clean energy grid. If we're worried about climate change, and I think that we all probably should be worried about climate change, then one of the steps that we need to take is to think about how to stop putting so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Wind power is one way to take coal out of the power grid and carbon dioxide out of our atmosphere. This is one small part of the approach that we need to take, but it's an important part to show that we are able to fulfill electrical demands with offshore wind energy. In Boulder, Keeley Chalmers, 9 News. Lundquist says Colorado is a leader when it comes to wind energy production. Five or ten years ago, Colorado started setting records for wind energy. The state was getting 60 to 70 percent of electricity from wind, which is quite a feat considering Colorado is at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to wind energy and that our air is not as dense as it is at sea level. So the winds need to be faster here in order for us to generate power.